Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Please join in singing Amazing Grace. It's number 446 in this brown book, Breaking Bread, number 446. Cecilia is going to sing verse 1 by herself, and then she would like you to join her on verses 2, 4, and 5. We're going to skip verse 3. So number 446 is the page number, and please come in on verse 2, and then sing verse 4 and 5 with Cecilia. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, and dear family of Istvan, I welcome you all here to St. Henry's for this celebration of his life. Such a beautiful life he led. And I asked Margaret before Holy Mass today, Margaret, would you like that I wear white today? And she said, absolutely white, because she wants to, this to be a joyous occasion, of course. We will shed a couple of tears today, this is for sure. But let one tear be a tear of sadness, and let the other tear be a tear of joy, because Stefan is in heaven now. He's with Jesus. And that's why at the beginning of this Holy Mass, I too want to welcome everyone who is watching maybe in Hungary on the live stream, his friends and his family who are watching. And at the beginning of this Holy Mass, now we want to sprinkle the remains of Istvan with holy water. 
In the waters of baptism, Istvan died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Istvan, whom you have called this day to journey to you, and since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may lead to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now we will have the first readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the wasteland that enjoys no change of season, but stands in lava beds in the wilderness, a land salty and uninhabited. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. The Lord will be their trust. They are like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. They are like, I'm sorry, it does not fear heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still produces fruit. More torturous than anything is the human heart beyond remedy. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, explore the mind and test the heart, giving to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their deeds. The word of the Lord. He 
guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall Spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the brightness of the heavenly is one kind and that of the earthly another. The brightness of the sun is one kind, the brightness of the moon another, and the brightness of the stars another. For star differs from star in brightness. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible, it is raised incorruptible. It is sown dishonorable, it is raised glorious. It is sown weak, it is raised powerful. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. So too it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly, and as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory 
Glory to thee, O Lord. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, let us pray together a Hail Mary for Istvan. You know, I don't know how many of us are here, but together we're certainly in just one Hail Mary. We've prayed a full rosary. It's so beautiful to know that. And let us offer it up for Istvan, for his soul. He's in heaven already, I am convinced. And I will tell you why now in this homily. And that's why today is a day of celebration. He is together with Greg in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We have just prayed, have we not, Michaela, now and at the hour of our death. We prayed it last night too together, did we not? Yeah, pray for us sinners, because each one of us are sinners. Istvan was a sinner, but he prayed too. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Padre Pio pray, play, prayed the same. Saint Therese of Lisieux prayed the very same. Because these are the two most important moments of our life, now and the hour of our death. And Istvan, that's why I can say, when I know I'm convinced that God is such a loving Papa who loves each one of us infinitely, that he died on the cross for us, then I know Istvan is in heaven because he was so well prepared to go to heaven. But God prepared him differently to what we expect because often when we hear of people getting sick, like Istvan, had a, his heart was causing him a few problems, and we can think, oh, how can God allow this to happen? But look what happened. Through this, he received all the sacraments. And that's why the cross is also a blessing. It's the same. My papa died yesterday, four months ago, in June, 28th of June this year. And he died of cancer. But I could prepare him too to go to meet Jesus. That's why you pray now and at the hour of our death, because now is the most important moment. Now is the time when I love Jesus and I love Our Lady, and then the hour of my death will be the most beautiful one. We saw this with Ishtar. Did we not see this? You're all witnesses to this. He was so well prepared. That's why the cross is a blessing. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said it so Beautifully, I, I say this often in homilies, this beautiful quote from Mother Teresa, I brought it with me in case I forget it. And, and think of it, even if you don't believe in any word what I'm saying now, remember, Jesus loves you infinitely, as if you were the only person on the planet. Because Jesus on the cross, he has his arms stretched open, Mother Teresa said. She said, suffering has to come to everybody, whether you believe or you don't believe. Ishtvan believed. But the cross came. But she said, the cross has to come that came in the life of Jesus and Our Lady because look at the cross, don't look at me. And you will know what is happening, Mother Teresa said. Suffering, pain and sorrow and loneliness are nothing but the kiss of Jesus. Why? Because she said, look at the cross. He has his arms stretched open because he wants to hug you. He has his head bent down because he wants to kiss you. And he has his side opened because he wants to receive you into his heart. And this was how it was for Istvan, was it not, Nelly? Did Jesus not have his arms open through his illness and was hugging him all the time? Was he not kissing him constantly? 
Yes, he was, because he was united completely with Istvan in his suffering. And through his suffering, Istvan could be so beautifully prepared to go to heaven. Mother Teresa wrote further, at times you come so close to Jesus on the cross that he can kiss you. And this happened with Istvan. I once told this to a lady, she said, who suffered very much. She answered, tell Jesus not to kiss me anymore, to stop kissing me. Suffering has to come that came in the life of Jesus and Our Lady, and it has to come in our life too. But don't put on a long face. Suffering is a gift from God. It is between you and Jesus alone inside. And as Emily read in the second reading, and that's so beautifully how, uh, how you pick these readings for today about this heavenly body. Istvan now is wearing his heavenly body. Like I said to you last night, Margaret, you wouldn't recognize him almost because he looks like this, this handsome young man that you met all those years ago. And that's how it is. In heaven, it's totally different. In heaven, there are no more heart problems. You understand? And that's why Istvan is so happy now. Because he's in heaven where there's no more sickness, no more suffering, no more sadness, and where he can help us already from heaven. You know, Ivanka, one of the visionaries in Medjugorje, as she saw Our Lady, her mother died two months before the apparition started. And then on her birthday, Our Lady appeared to her. She was one of the visionaries, Ivanka. And Ivanka, as Our Lady appeared as a gift for her birthday, Ivanka saw her mother. And she said, you, boy, you look so beautiful. And then she saw her again for her next birthday a few years later. And she said she looked even more beautiful because in heaven we only love. And that's why Our Lady said in Medjugorje, when the visionaries asked Our Lady, how come you're so beautiful? She said, I'm so beautiful because I love. Dear girls, is it not a wish to be so beautiful as Our Lady? Then all you need to do is to love, to love like Our Lady. That's the true beauty. And Istvan Harry has this now. And you know, now you can't see him maybe face to face. I saw a beautiful video of him last night playing the accordion in the kitchen. And maybe now we can't see Istvan face to face. I can't see my father face to face anymore. And the pain of separation is there. I'm sure you feel it sometimes. And think of any of your loved ones who have gone before you. But do you know where you can meet him? Heart to heart, here in the tabernacle, in the Holy Eucharist, you will meet your father, your husband, your son, your daughter who went before you. Here you meet them. And that goes for any of you because they are in Jesus. All of heaven is in Jesus, is in the Holy Eucharist. And that's why I am so certain he is in heaven now because how can I be so certain that he is in heaven? Because he was so well prepared. He had true, I can tell you how it was, he broke his finger and he had to, or his wrist apparently and then he had to put on a cast and then he cut his head, Istvan. And through this, it all happened that he decided he wants to go to confession. And then on the Feast of St. Therese, it happened so beautifully, he had all the sacraments he needed. And then again after, and then again after. That's why I'm so certain that Istvan is in heaven. And he is free from all of that. And this is why we pray now and at the hour of our death. Because whether you believe or you don't believe, Jesus comes for you someday. And how do we prepare? We go to Jesus with empty hands. Be totally empty from your sins. And that's why Istvan was so happy. Because he was totally free from all his sins. He died, I am certain, like a first Holy Communion baby, child. Because he had no sins. He was so pure. And this is how we need to live our lives, is to always be prepared for our own funeral. Each one of us has to be prepared. Be prepared for this most important meeting. You know, we prepare for every meeting. If we have a meeting in school, if we have a meeting at work, we prepare. But then to prepare for the most important meeting of our life. And Istvan was prepared because he had the courage to ask for the help to be prepared. 
Jesus said to Saint Faustina, let the weak sinful soul have no fear to approach me, for even if it had more sins than there are grains of sand in the world, all would be drowned in the unmeasurable depths of my mercy. And this is what happens to each one of us. When you have the courage to go to holy confession, then you come out with empty hands. And then if Jesus decides to come for you, you are so prepared. And who is the greatest way in order to do this than to do it with Our Lady? Any Hungarian saint, Elizabeth of Hungary, Saint Stephen, had devotion to Our Lady. And this is why we need her. As Maximilian Kolbe said, I only can work with one hand because my other hand is always holding Our Lady's hand. And that's what Mother Teresa of Calcutta said once. You know, she was asked once by a journalist, Mother Teresa, what's the secret of your success? And I say this to any of you here, what's the secret to getting to heaven? And Mother Teresa answered it so beautifully. She said, when I was 12 years old, I was walking through the park with my mother, hand in hand. And my mother stopped and she said, Agnes, that was her name before she was Mother Teresa, she said, Agnes, always go through life holding the hand of Our Lady, just like you're holding my hand now. And she said, that was the secret of my success. And that's the reason how we all get to heaven. I finish with these beautiful words which Our Lady gave us in Guadalupe. These are the, these are the words she said to Juan Diego. And is she saying these words to each one of you now? Because Our Lady, through our love for Our Lady, then you have a love to go to confession. You have a love for Jesus that is infinite, that you want to do everything to be ready and to live in this state of purity. And you know, it's not even about preparing for death, it's about being happy. Because when we don't go to confession, it makes us sad. And you could see this with Ishtar. He was so free. And so happy because he had no sins. Our Lady said, Hear and un she says this to each one of you, right into the depths of your heart. Hear me and let understand well, my little son, that nothing should frighten or grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not worry about this sickness nor any other sickness or concern. Am I not here who is your mother? Are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not the source of your joy? Are you not under the protection of my mantle in the fold of my arms? Do you need something more than this? Do not be grieved or disturbed by anything. And so we thank God and we thank Our Lady for the life of Istvan. In a short time, I really gained a friend and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity and the honor to meet him. Like I said to Margaret and to Emily and Nelly, he had this cheeky look in his eyes, this twinkle in his eyes that I'll never forget. And now he really has it in heaven, sitting on Our Lady's lap. And so now we will celebrate the Holy Eucharist and you will, as you receive Jesus, remember, he is in Jesus. He is in the Holy Eucharist because all of heaven comes in your hearts then. Amen. Now I ask Madeline, Michael, and Michaela to come forward, and we have the prayers of the faithful. With hope in the resurrection of Christ, and with deep sorrow in the loss of one we loved, let us call on God, source of all kindness and comfort. that our grandpa and all who have died may come into the merciful presence of our Lord and share with him the joys of the kingdom of light, happiness, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear For grandpa's family and friends, his beloved wife, Margaret, his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and all those who mourn him, may they be assured of Christ's closeness to them in their sorrow and find strength and comfort through their faith in Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
for her father, Niall, and thanks for his <clears throat> incredible kindness in preparing our grandfather for his departure from this earth to his eternal home. May he and all priests be blessed abundantly in their vocation. We pray to the Lord. For the nurses, caregivers, and those who brought comfort, offered prayers, and showed kindness to Grandpa during his last few weeks on this earth, may their generous spirits be filled with peace and love. We pray to the Lord. For Grandpa's loved ones who have gone before him, especially his beloved son Greg and his parents Ishvan and Maria, may they be joined together in our heavenly home and rest peacefully in the Lord's presence. We pray to the Lord. For all gathered here today to worship in faith, that we may seek to live our lives serving, loving, and forgiving one another. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, we affirm our faith and our hope in the resurrection of your Son, comforted and by your grace and your promise of eternal life, we offer you our prayers on this day, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing Fly Like a Bird. It's number 474 in the Breaking Bread book, number 474.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Ishtvan, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance which are elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Stephen and Elizabeth of Hungary, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Ishtvan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The glory are yours, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Ishtvan may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now I invite Emily to come to read the eulogy. Today, my father would have celebrated his 75th birthday. He hoped to be able to make it to today to celebrate his life with us, but God had different plans for him. This tribute letter is in honor of this great man, whom we called Opa, also the Hungarian translation for dad. If I was asked to describe my father with only a few words, it would be fitting to say that he was hardworking, curious, innovative, intelligent, musical, artistic, creative, service-oriented, strong-willed, courageous, selfless, and humble of heart. Although these words are reflective of his character, they do not come close to revealing the true depths of his soul. I would like to take this opportunity, as we gather here to celebrate our dad, to paint a picture of the man he was and the incredible impact he had upon his children and the lives he touched along the way. Oppo was born to Istvan and Mario Fulecki in the small village of Hort in northern Hungary on October 29, 1947. As a firstborn and only boy of four children, he learned at a young age what it meant to live a life of service and hard work. I can imagine his sisters, Evi, Morika, and Joka, must have contributed to the incredible amount of patience our father possessed all his life growing up with a house full of girls. Appa was an obedient son who made his mom and dad proud. As a young man, he served in the military, but his whole life changed at 23 when he met our beautiful mother, Margaret. She says he was one of the kindest souls that she had ever met. After three years of dating, they began their life of many adventures when they immigrated to the United States in 1974. Their first home together was in Long Beach, California, where they married and started a family. After Stephen, I, and Nellie were born, our parents decided to move back to Hungary. We settled in the small village of Barashka, where most folks owned property, produced crops, and raised animals. Papa went back to school and became a nurse at the main hospital in Budapest, a distance from our home that required a four-hour daily commute by train. In 1983, we welcomed our little brother Greg as the newest member of the Filecki family. Papa didn't stop at nursing, though. He spent his weekends caring for a large garden, raising rabbits, and the many tasks maintaining our home required. Despite such responsibility, he still made time to put a smile on our faces with his ability to combine his creativity and his innovative mind and build amazing toys from what most would consider trash. He built us playhouses, playground equipment, go-karts, and many treasures for our childhood entertainment. In fact, when my sister and I later traveled back to visit our childhood home over 20 years, one of the playground toys he made for us was still in its original place, as if it were still new. Despite the simple life and the memory, memories we shared at the time, Hungary was dominated by a communist government, and it became increasingly difficult for families to thrive. Our dad approached the embassy requesting permission to be able to work in the United States temporarily to obtain income to support our family. The representative there mocked and laughed at him, his ridiculous request. But with the increased difficulty in being able to provide warm clothing and basic needs for us kids, our parents made the courageous decision to escape by whatever means necessary. They were also concerned about our spiritual well-being, since atheism and corruption had overridden the land. Despite the risk of a jail, they meticulously and secretly planned their ingenious escape, letting only their parents and a few worthy of trust know of their intentions. Not even my siblings or I knew what our parents were up to. So with $300 in savings and incredible faith, in June of 1998, they woke us up early in the morning 
and with no more than a small suitcase full for each of the four of us, they said goodbye to the rest of their lives to their motherland of Hungary. The journey that awaited ahead deemed nothing less than miraculous. It would take more time than I have now to tell the story in detail, but if you can imagine what taking four younger children to the supermarket is like, well, imagine that intensified by a thousand, traveling country to country, penniless, and depending on solely the Lord to provide. My parents bravely journeyed from one destination to the next, and God provided little miracles every step of the way. Our presence here today proves the success of this expedition, and if it wasn't for the determination and heroism of our father and our mother, our lives would not compare to what they are today. Their courage paved our foundation of faith, teaching us that with God truly all things are possible. In no time after our arrival to the U.S., we settled into our new lives here in Oregon, starting with a small two-bedroom apartment just off 162nd and Burnside. Opa joined the steel industry and became a machinist. He worked for Columbia Steel Casting Company for the next 25 years. Before long, they bought their first home in southeast Portland and welcomed their fifth and final child, Cecilia, into the family. Opa loved music, and playing the piano and accordion were among his favorites. He used these gifts to entertain at many parties and events over the years. It was so important to him that even in his last days, his final request was to be able to play for the Brideville sisters that he had spent time with and built a garden for. They would also come to their home for afternoon sing-alongs where he would play the piano for them. While time did not allow his wish to be fulfilled, and he, as he had planned, he was able to play for the nurses who came to visit him just a few days before he said goodbye. He was an avid gardener and spent countless hours creating a self-watering system for the greenhouse. Opa's plants were always extraordinary in size and thriving. He was always so excited about sharing his discoveries with us and hoped to make a business out of it someday. Before he became ill, you could find him on a river bank on the Columbia River with a fishing pole in his hand or in the garage tinkering away at some incredible new gizmo he had come up with. He was a deep thinker, a problem solver. He was smart. He spoke four different languages. He traveled the world. He was an attentive listener and had a way about him that brought about a sense of calm even in the most difficult moments. Our mother said it well, one of the kindest souls we have ever met. Still, one of the most notable things about Appa, even above all he did do, is what he did not do. From the time seven years ago when he was diagnosed with congestive heart failure to overcoming colon cancer to dealing with his newly diagnosed diabetes in and out of the hospital all the way to his last days on, on hospice, he did not complain, not once. He humbly and quietly carried his cross but still remained full of smiles when he would visit. While Nellie and I carried for, cared for him those final days, he was advising us on a plan so that we could both get sleep. He even told us he would do everything in his power to help us from the other side. He just never quit. His family was everything to him, and he dedicated his life to us. Though he is gone from our physical presence, he lives on in spirit in his children, in his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. From the musical and artistic talent that he had passed down to the serving hearts, the hard workers, and even his little mini-me granddaughter, Lily, he lives on. His legacy does not end here. Just a few thoughts in conclusion. Not all of us are blessed with a father like Opa, but I am convinced that we all can identify someone in our lives who emulate love worthy of imitation. The good that we do, no matter how insignificant, holds incredible value. Every action is like a water trickling down from generation to generation, from one life to the next. Not a single moment of our lives goes unnoticed by our Heavenly Father. This life that we have been given is a gift. None of us are promised to tomorrow. As believers in our precious Lord, let us follow my Father's lead. Let us invoke God's unfailing grace and strive to love one another more conscientiously, making good use of our time, 
by serving and forgiving each day. May our actions be such that the life of Jesus would flourish in our mortal bodies, and we too might leave this world, like our Father, with a legacy of selflessness and unfailing love. Thank you all for coming, and God bless you. Thank you, Emily, for such a beautiful eulogy. And isn't it incredible how God worked it that today on his birthday, that is his, our final farewell to Istvan. Our Lady said in Medjugorje, we should celebrate someone's birth in heaven with more joy than their birth on earth because he is there now for all eternity. And so now, before I pray the final prayers of commendation, I offer again my sympathy to you all, dear Margaret, dear Stephen, dear Emily, dear Nelly, Cecilia. I offer my sincere condolences. I do feel your pain. This I can promise you. And to all his family and friends. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Please turn to number 688. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ishtvan, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Ishtvan in, in this life. They are signs of us, they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain. Help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Can please stand for the final blessing. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, all the angels and all the saints bless and protect you all, the Almighty and Merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join us singing Irish Blessing. It's number 372, number 372. the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always with you. May the sun shine warm you always till we meet again. May the rain fall softly Be with you. 